The second language that we use to communicate love is that of quality time. Beyond our words of affirmation, quality time. For some people, words just don't matter a lot. We all can use lots of words. They want attention. They want your presence. Quality time is an issue of togetherness. It's an issue of conversation and activity. Hebrews 10.25, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. We share that verse most often with reference to church and our attendance at worship. But yet it is also applicable to our families and to our relationship. Togetherness has to do with focused attention. The husband who is watching sports while talking to his wife is not giving her quality time because she doesn't have his full attention. And ladies, let me say that at lap 490 of a 500 mile or a 500 lap race probably isn't the time to ask for those quality moments. Quality time has to be expressed and planned for in the proper ways. A sympathetic dialogue where two individuals share experience, thoughts, and feelings, and desires in a friendly, and here's one, uninterrupted manner. That's why Friday night we've made arrangements for the, uh, uh, the children to be at DePaul while we are here for our dinner. Because invariably, one or two of those kids will find their way into uh, where the adults are. And we want to be able to have a nice evening away. It's important for quality time that parents have uninterrupted time together to just be a couple. Have you ever noticed uh, married couples at restaurants? You can kind of tell those who are dating or newly married and those who've been married for a while. Because it's the dating couples and the newly married couples that are kind of leaning on the table and they're smiling and they're grinning and they're just talking. And it's the couples who've been married for a while who come in, sit down, literally you see or hear nothing from the table except when you order. And the entire meal kind of goes along as if there, well, wasn't anything going on. You seen those couples out at night? Now be sure there are some couples who've just reached that stage in their life and in their relationship where just literally being together requires not saying anything at all just being together is enough but it's quite the opposite for most of us it's just lack of good quality time the key for quality conversation eye contact listen for feelings observe body language and refuse to be interrupted the emphasis is being together and doing things together. It's not about the what. It's not about the why. It's about the who. The essential ingredients are simply these. That one of you wants to do whatever activity you're doing and the second person's at least willing to go along. You make, you make time for such things as lunch and dinner because they're essential so why do we not make time for each other? So here's a couple of practical suggestions for quality time. Think of comments that your spouse has made through the years. Things like, I've always wanted to, or someday I would like to, and then plan an event or activity around one of these comments. Your spouse will, quite frankly, be surprised that you actually remembered, and two, that they'll be surprised that you pulled it off without any input from them. A second suggestion. Plan an activity that, um, that you know your spouse enjoys, but one that, quite frankly, you've made known you don't enjoy, and then go do that together. They'll be surprised that you actually took the time to do something they know you don't like to do to just spend some time with them. Words of affirmation. Quality time. The third way we communicate love in our relationships is through the giving of gifts, the receiving of gifts. Visual symbols of love are more important to some people than they are to others. Luke 6, 38, if you give, you will receive. Your gift will return in full measure. You see, gifts and trinkets are a visual symbol of our love and our commitment 
to the other person. A gift is something you can hold in your hand. You can look at. You can say, they were thinking about me or they remembered me. Now, to the individual whose love language is receiving gifts, the cost is irrelevant. Unless, of course, it's greatly out of line with what you can afford. If you've got a million dollars in the bank and you're bringing home 50 cent trinkets, it's probably not going to say what you're wanting it to say. However, if your family finances are a little bit limited, a 50 cent or a dollar trinket may very well speak a million dollars worth of love and commitment. Gifts don't have to be expensive. They just have to be proportional and represent where you are. In fact, they can be free. Quite honestly, some of the best gifts and those that we cherish the most are those that cost us nothing other than a little time to make. Have you ever noticed that the things we hold on to and keep in our uh, memento boxes are often things that uh, have been made for us? especially from children. I mean, think about that for a minute. Children from their earliest age are inclined to give gifts. Maybe it's a flower that they bring to their mother, even if it's a flower that you would have rather not had picked from your flower garden. Or it may just simply be a weed, like a dandelion. You know, but kids, they enjoy giving. It's a natural instinct. And then we hold on to all of those little things they draw and make for us. And we cherish them, and they become family heirlooms. Well, you made this when you were how old? Well, spouses, what if we did the same thing? I dare say that some of the gifts that we could make and give would be cherished even above those things that we could buy. Some of you may say, well, I'm not a gift giver. I don't see where it's relevant. It doesn't come naturally to me. Well, then let me say congratulations. You've just had the first discovery in what it takes to be a good spouse. You and your spouse communicate differently. And so if your spouse cherishes gifts, learn to give them. It's not about whether it matters to you. It's about whether it matters to your spouse. A couple of tips and suggestions for this. Do a parade of gifts. If your spouse communicates through the receiving of gifts... Do a parade of gifts. Leave one gift in the morning. Leave another in the afternoon. Leave a, thir- leave a third one in the evening. And when you're, a- you're, you're asked what's going on, just simply say, I just wanted to tell you I love you. Keep a gift idea notebook. Whenever you hear your spouse say, I really like that, or I would like to have one of those, write it down. If you listen carefully, you will come up with quite a list. And you will never run out of options for the giving of gifts. And here's a clincher. Don't wait for a special occasion. In fact, give a gift on a day that has no meaning at all. Other than just that it's a day to give a gift. And when they ask why, you can simply 